Sephiroth! I'll admit it does make some sense to introduce Sephiroth earlier in the game, considering the way that this is breaking the story up into a number of different episodes. But as far as the overall story goes, it still doesn't make a lot of sense to me for Sephiroth to be introduced as early as he has been. But, you know, whatever. Everyone okay? <sighs> hey, get your man. He got away. Huh. About time we made our escape, too. Hmm. Take Aerith and get out of here. Hmm. I'll buy you guys some time. I can stay here. Back you up. Barrett. I'm asking you. Please. Oh, fine. Have it your way then. But you better be right behind us. A soldier, aren't you? Which, of course, would mean that I own you. <laughs> Ex soldier, I quit. Secure the others. <laughs> hmm. Just the two of us. Well, maybe three. Let's get this over with. No. It made perfect sense for them to change up the character, the secondary antagonist that was the president of Shinra, from President Shinra, who we don't know his first name, or at least I don't, to Rufus. Rufus is a much more personal villain, somebody who, you know his first name, you have a better idea of his personality and all that. Shinra beforehand, well, it's sort of like what they did with Final Fantasy VI. So, in Final Fantasy VI, you had the Empire, which had um, Kefka and I had Celisp and all that, but the leader of the Empire for the large part of the game, first half of the game or so, was Emperor Gestalt. 
Gestal is not the main antagonist of the game, but it puts a little bit of effort into kind of giving you the impression that he was. Honestly, even as a child, I wasn't convinced that he was the main bad guy. I definitely knew that Kefka was from the beginning. But they sort of, like, portray him as the leader of the Empire, and he makes an appearance here or there, but he's not really... Um, he doesn't really do a whole hell of a lot, and he definitely feels like he doesn't have any personality to him. There's not much of a character to him. Much like President Shinra in Final Fantasy VII. Then they go and they kill him off. In Final Fantasy VI, he's killed by Kefka. In um, Seven, he is killed by Sephiroth. And he's replaced. Now, Six just sort of replaced this character, this secondary antagonist character, with the main antagonist, which was Kefka. And this one, like, although Sephiroth does take position as the primary antagonist, um, President Shinra's role as a secondary antagonist was placed, replaced by Rufus. And you kind of needed this, because as much effort as they put into um, portraying Sephiroth as something of a human being in his early portrayals in the game and all of that, you're going to be overexposed with this character if you encounter him too many times. So you definitely need a secondary antagonist to be appearing over and over again. Somebody who you fight against most of the time, you cooperate with some of the time, and all this other kind of stuff. Somebody who's clearly not the big bad, but he's also somebody that you don't want to... Yeah, like, bad bedfellows, if you know what I mean. And Rufus fills that role perfectly. I think they kind of screwed his character up with Advent Children, if I haven't mentioned before, I'm not a big fan of that movie. But I thought Rufus was a great character in the original version of Final Fantasy VI. Haven't seen enough of him in this version of the game. I think you got my number? Not at all. You're making me sweat. Good thing I came prepared. Let's speed this up a little bit, get through this boss battle. Like I was saying before, I haven't seen enough of him in this version of the story to know for sure that he's going to sort of carry through, but, you know, he's doing all right so far. I feel like they definitely screwed up, though, with Advent Children. Um, the way that they try to, in that game, make all of your... Yeah, I'm not going to bother going back and editing that back in. Just the same animation over and over again with slightly different dialogue. These battles definitely take take a long time. Not bad as far as a game goes, but if you're making a video of it that's not um, like strategy related, like showing you how to beat the game or anything like that, it's going to, the battles can drag on. God, I thought he was so annoying the first time I played the, uh, this battle, anyway, in the original game. Not that it, I thought he was hard. I mean, I had a hard time Final Fantasy VII the first time I played through, although the game's not hard. For some reason, I got stuck on some parts that aren't really difficult. I had to fight Rufus twice, and the 100 Gunner on the way out. I For some reason, I had to fight that thing like six times. I got fucked on it for some reason. <laughs> I could end this, here and now. No, not quite. Tonight marks a new beginning. For Shinra!
You gotta be better than this. If you're gonna play the hero. Think they can manage on their own? You've seen them both in action. You know they can. Besides... <gasps> what was that? <sighs> gotta believe they made it out. I hope so. Damn it. Hey. Screw it. We gotta go pay. Hey. What, Red? Get down! <laughs> We're cool. Everything's cool. Ah! <laughs> Difference. <laughs> hey, still in one piece? Yeah, somehow. Hmm. <sighs> Of course, the 100 gunner attacked, or whatever it's called in this game, attacked uh, our party when they were in the elevator. And the fighting system of that game, like, allowed that kind of battle to play out like that. But in this version, with the real time battles and all that kind of stuff, and red and uh, stuff, not having to um, maneuver around a large 3D space, you couldn't have the fight be on an elevator. Um, wedge there. They're really putting effort into making Wedge trying to prove himself, trying to um, do something more than what he did in the original game. The Avalanche characters in the early, in the original game, were very much different than what they were portrayed here. At times, they were played like they were competent, competent but they were large. They were largely part of Avalanche, which was sort of a disaster. And then the character who was the least capable was Wedge. He had Biggs and, and Jesse, who were competent in their own way. But Wedge was just kind of like the fat guy. And they sort of portrayed him in the early parts of this game as being just the fat guy who's a part of the group. And like talking about food all the time and this other and all this other kind of stuff. But then they had the... Um, after the plate fell, uh, he died in the original game when the plate fell. In fact, he may have actually died prior to the plate falling because he got knocked off of the um, he got knocked off of the platform, off of the pillar, and fell. And he was still alive when he hit the ground and he talked to us a little bit, but 
You never see him die, but it's reasonable to assume that he did die. You never, you never see him again, and everyone talks about him like he's dead. But anyway, it's well, he's a whatever character. In this, how they fleshed a lot of characters out, and they fleshed the backstories of Avalanche and all this other kind of stuff out. Especially Jesse. But they, even with Wedge here, they put effort into it, making him feel like, oh, like, well, he's the lesser of the group. He is. He's got to fight to prove himself and all this other kind of stuff. And he's, he's an idiot, and he's a loser, and he's a screw-up. He gets captured by the... <laughs> He gets captured while trying to get the explosives, and then the other members of Avalanche, the other Avalanche cells, just sort of pick him up and then throw him out their van as they're escaping. It's like, like, well, we can't leave him to die, but we don't give a shit about this guy, <laughs> so let's chuck him out of our van. So they're putting effort into, like, making him prove himself, and he may, I don't know, you don't see him die, but he may have just died. The ghosts may have just thrown him out the window. So he may be dead now. Because the ghosts have been trying to return the story to the way that it played. Trying to keep the story from deviating too much from the way that it was before. And, and Wedge should be dead. So they may have just killed Wedge in an attempt to... Killed Wedge in an attempt to sort of drag the story back to where it should be. So they're... I don't know, it, it's kind of weird, and I and I do have questions. Like, where is this story going to go after? Like, what is the second chapter of Final Fantasy VII going to go? Or the third chapter? What are they going to look like if they're willing to deviate from the story to this degree? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait to find out. find a way we can all escape, and quickly. You're right. Let's go. All we gotta do now is find the others. <clears throat> Have them surrounded, sir. Yes, I can see that. It was only a matter of time. Here we are. <laughs> so then, what is this ragtag group of misfits I see before me? Avalanche! Local florist! Lab rat dog. <laughs> then where are the rest of you? Up your ass. <laughs> Charming. Though not what I would have chosen as my last words. Secure the ancient, but feel free to kill both the idiot and the dog. Hmm. Aerith, 
You saved my Marlene. Now, it's time I return the favor. Wait! Okay. Why is he always got a... Whoa! Whoa! Shit! <laughs> 